I realize it's been a while since I made a walking tour video of our little backyard. I will say this, pardon my voice <laughs> in this video. I've got a little bit of a cold I'm working through. But there's so much happening, there's so much uh, that will be happening soon that I thought it would be nice to document it at this stage and share some notes. Uh, you can see we're getting into potting up some plants almost entirely for, in this case, for some friends that are getting married in September. We have a really sweet idea of, or their idea of, potting up trees in polyculture. I talk about this in another video where each of these trees have companions and so these will be centerpieces at their wedding when they uh, when folks sit down to eat. Anyway, so doing a little bit of potting up, <clears throat> you can see that's what this area is for. Set up the compost tea bubbler again this year. Actually just set that up yesterday and you can see we've got this little controller. I can turn this all the way up to get some real nice bubbling happening in there. So that's nice to have set up. And the biggest work that we're working on right now is taking all the compost from our chicken yard and bringing it out to the main garden, renovating and loosening, decompacting beds, topping them off with compost. And so we'll take a walk out there. I think there's just way too much to try to cover in this video as far as, you know, each one of the systems. So consider this a glancing talk. And what I'd love to hear from people uh, as we walk through and I point out highlights of different things or what are what areas are you really interested in us getting deeper into we're happy to explore them so let us know in the comments and we'll go deeper here's a bed where we're trialing production of perennial spinaches so we've got Good King Henry on the southern edge here and Hoblitzia which is just a truly wonderful um, Caucasian mountain spinach is the other name perennial climbing spinach vine Hopefully we'll be offering that through the website soon. And I talked about this in my one of my last videos about we've got uh, onions and tree seeds mixed in and sweet sicily and all sorts of uh, persimmons and perennial onions and sea buckthorn seedlings in the back there. Lots more perennial propagation happening this year in the garden. <clears throat> There's a couple beds like this where we've got Grafted apples is some of the few areas that have lots of plastic of the tags in here. So I've got to go through and keep track of these. We put space between them to be able to intercrop them with other support crops that stay nice and small. And we can see the chickweed's really blowing up. This year I think we're going to be a lot more intentional about saving seed from the chickweed. Comfrey's coming up beautifully as usual. We'll start being able to take some serious cuttings from that to send to our chickens. Haven't even gotten into the main garden yet. This is being uh, moving over to being a dedicated stool bed. So we've got Janneker Vertet's really nice heirloom red currant that's being stool layered. And as of a week ago, I planted out Antonovka and Tovnica apple root stocks that are all planted very steep uh, to the north and they'll be stooled with soil as they grow. They're just starting to wake up. So we'll be able to have um, full-size apple rootstocks that we can graft onto. These are Manchundrian apricot rootstocks, and then Old Home 97 uh, European pear rootstocks. So that's kind of fun to have, right on the north side of the garden there. The main garden itself, I don't even know where to begin. <laughs> Got the never bolting sorrel, <clears throat> trialing that more as a rhizome and an edge barrier plant, which seems to be working quite nicely. And what you'll see a lot more of in our videos this summer is really thorough raised bed preparation. So Sasha went through yesterday and dug out the walkways and built them up and then we topped it with, boy, maybe four to six inches of compost. So she's now going through and seeding beets and carrots into basically, I don't know, 8 to 12 inches of straight organic matter that have been decompacted. We have a really wet site, so the more we can build up, the more options we have of what we can grow. In beds that are less built up, we can do plants that are more adapted to that. So this is a stool bed, propagation bed for ranch elderberry. It's all just root fragments that I planted out, and they're popping up like crazy. 
We'll bury them in soil throughout the summer and get hundreds of plants from that. Now here's something that's pretty magical. In this one area, <clears throat> what happened was in the fall, I dumped compost from our chicken operation. And I left it. And I was going to fold it in, turn it, you know, get it planted out. But this is what came out. This is the weed load we're dealing with from our chicken operation. Italian oak leaf lettuce, purple auric, uh, heirloom bib lettuce, whole bunch of radishes, whole bunch of different nice mustards, some kales, some amaranth is in there somewhere. There are a couple plants that we'd consider weeds, a little bit of ragweed, but it's pretty remarkable that if we just dump compost into our garden, it fills with food at this point. You gotta believe me, I didn't actually seed that patch, nor did we seed this patch, which is just waking up, same deal. Different types of beautiful oryx and lettuces, followed with mustards and a couple of kales. Actually, no, those kales got transplanted in, but <laughs> the rest came with the compost, which is really fun. It's like auto food compost. Anyway, the rest of the garden <clears throat> just starting to wake up. The chives and the shallots or scallions really looking good off in the distance. The chickweed and nettle lumps, incredibly lush. So worthwhile to let chickweed grow or to actually facilitate it. We've been eating a tremendous amount of it. Same thing with this Claytonia such a great early season green and it seems like they're willing to kind of naturalize if you get out of the way. And the nettles which Sasha cooks with almost every day. Some of the first <clears throat> real sig significant food from the garden is our stinging nettle patch. You can see we got to actually really harvest it because it's take taking over this lavender that's in here. So that's on the docket. We'll go into this in more detail as well, but we're also starting to plant out some really fine cultivar sea berries, which we'll be layering and uh, propagating from suckers. But what a beauty is a sea berry in a sea of chickweed with an understory of sage. Kind of nice there. Here's a rootstock from what was supposed to be a pear, or I'm sorry, a plum that Sasha bought a number of years ago, and it turns out some sort of rootstock. If I didn't know any better, this is a peach. What do folks think? Is this a peach? An apricot understock? It'd be interesting to see what sort of fruit comes off of this. Whoever was the grafted top is dead, but now we've got this beautiful flowering shrubby tree. <clears throat> Just got a bunch of varieties of biomass and fine basket willows, a whole bunch of cutting blocks from Vermont Willow Company, so we're growing those out this year. So much going on. Just a whole bunch of seedling trees, different plums and apples and gummies grown from seed. We're letting those grow for two years, and we'll dig them out once they're six to eight feet tall. This gummy is only two years old, and it's already going to be taller than me this year. That's pretty exciting. Yeah, lots happening. I feel almost overwhelmed trying to think about what to point at next. So let us know what feels really exciting about what you've just seen in the garden. We'll go deeper once we get more of the annuals coming up. I'm real perennial dominant in my mind. Sasha grows most of our annuals. We work on both things, but that's her specialty. So maybe we can have her introduce you to her annual work when that comes up soon. And pardon me for my raspy voice, it should be getting better soon. Thanks for watching.